What's going on, everybody? This is Future Automation, a place where imagination meets reality, and you're listening to Tejas. So, guys, in the previous video of Apple Shortcuts 101, we have studied what is basically a variable and what all things we have done with the variable, you know, getting started with it, storing the data in the variable and all. But the basic understanding of any variable or any kind of data that you're storing is the data type. So today's video is all about data types. So let's get ready to go back into the fundamentals of programming and with a cup of coffee, let's get started. So like a variable is generally, a, you know, a data type is generally a collection or a grouping of, you know, data values usually specified by a set of possible values. That is what I have got from the internet. But what I understand from the data type is that any kind of value that is stored in a particular allocated space or a variable that you create to store that value the type of that value is nothing but the data type. And I know many of you will say, okay, this is something that we already know. But for the noobs who are not into, you know, uh, C, Pro, CSE or the programming, or they have, they have no interest in this data type and all, for them in the simplest term is the type of the data that you store in a variable is nothing but the data type of that variable. Now, here... Uh, you know, so let, let's uh, create a new shortcut to understand different types of data types. Okay, guys, so here basically we have a quick shortcut that I have created to explain you the five kinds of data that we are going to work in this full series throughout. And you cannot say that exactly these are the data types, but these are the main basic data types that we need to understand you know, to start with any kind of shortcut. The reason being is that all these five things represents to some or the other type of value that you are going to store in it, or it represents to some kind of value by default in it. Now, we're going to start with the very, you know, in very easiest one and the most, uh, I think the data type that you might use, that is the text. So, Basically, what text here shows is for the programming guys, strings. So the group of characters together creates a string and the string is nothing but the text. So here you can have one character as well or a group of characters in form of a string. Now what you can do is, so if say for example, if you are writing here anything, say for example, hello, this is a shortcut. So now, what you need to do is, you need to understand is internally, basically, this is storing this particular thing as a text. So, in respect of what value you are putting here, so say, for example, if you are putting here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, internally, it is going to store as text only. Now, to give you, uh, you know, uh, an, a live, you know, proof of how, what exactly is happening. So, say, for example, hi, and there is a action called get type here so you just drag it in between and we'll remove this now because we'll do it one after other so here uh, by default it will take the previous uh, the nearest variable uh, that we are having or the value so if we'll run it you can see that it is showing text now if say for example i'll add one two three four five and I'll click on play, still it will show text because there is no any concept of internal casting or, you know, implicit casting. Now, casting is something like, you know, changing one data type to the another, to another data type and 
basically this is something that we have in programming languages but here that is not available so to do that we need to use some other action we'll see that later on but for now you just keep in mind that text by default stores anything that you give as text now we'll see few examples of operations that we can do with text so uh, i'll add here hello world Now to perform an action, we'll 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 see here. So in if we'll go in the document section here, if we'll go down, 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 as at some point you'll find here text and text editing. So basically, these are the operations or the actions that you can use with text. So you can see dictate text, extract text from images, get name of image, emoji, get text from input, get text from PDF. And a lot of things make spoken audio from text you know show definition speak test and all that stuff what we are interested in is the basic string operations like change case combine texts you know correct spelling get group from match text match text replace text and split text now from this what we are going to use is we are going to use change case it is the easiest one and you know the most understandable for for all the folks here so by default we'll take the text value and we need to convert it to uppercase but we have a few more you know uh, options as well lowercase capitalize every word capitalize with title case capitalize with sentence case you know capitalize with alternating case and ask each time now if you'll run this what you can see is that the whole hello, hello world is being turned into hello world capital case so basically this is it now if you want to perform some other uh you know actions the great thing about shortcut and its action is that you have an i button here whenever you click it it will show you that what exactly it performs what kind of out input it needs and what kind of result you will get so join the next text together inserting the separator between each join and text so we'll get the input as text and result as text as well if we'll go below you have correct spellings so auto correct the spelling of text pass into the action again text as an input and result as an input if you want to speak the text then you need to drag it this speak test text here and you can just push it in between and then when you'll play it you can listen what text you have written hello so you can see that if the voice is a bit low, then, uh, you know, sorry for that, but uh, both sides I'm recording. So let's hope the voice is really good. If not, I'll add some more gain in that. No worries. So this particular action usually is used when you need to, uh, you know, get some information or do some action and then output that action as a voice. So that's why at that point we use it. Now, enough with the text. Now, next to that, what we are going to look at is numbers. So let's search for number. Now here we have numbers. So if you want to add anything here, say for example, do five, and if you'll show it, and basically you'll get a number. Now to confirm that whether this is number or not, we can again call the get type here and it will take the number value by default and when you will run it it will show you number now previously i told you that in text if we are putting up number and we are trying to check what type of value it is and show you text but if you want to get input of a text value a number and then convert it to number what you do is you get the text value so say for example here I'll add here text and I'll put here 12 and then here I'll clear it out so I'll just clear it and here in the select variable just to make sure that we don't select any wrong value and now we'll clear this as well and now we'll again select a variable number just to be sure now if we were going to check the type of text directly we all know that we are going to get uh, text as a value but if we'll run now you can see that it is showing number the reason being is that this particular number here 
action is converting this text into a number. So if I'll add hi, let's see what it does. And if I'll run, it will show you that number failed because short because shortcuts couldn't convert from text to number. Now it knows that the text value you have given is not actually a number, but a character or a string or a text for that matter. So it is it is not able to convert. Now, if you are performing any kind of operation here, it will it will not it will give you an error. Now in numbers. Hmm. Uh, we again have some, you know, uh, some operations that you can perform. One of them is in the suggestion, of course, is calculate. So if I'll pull it here, now one value it will take by default, which is number. So here we can add anything, say, for example, 25. And here we can add, say, 12. And now if I'll run it, it will show you the output, that is 37. If here I had to add text, I'll pull this text here. And I'll put it somewhere in between. So I'll put it here and I'll add hi. And then here I'll clear this and I'll put select variable and text here. Although it is expecting a number, here we are putting supplying it text value. Again, for here we'll supply number. And let's see what it does. As I was saying that it will give you an error. So supposedly it should give an error. And here, converge an error. Previously, like I think uh, a while back, one or one one year, I think, or behind, before one year, I guess, this was not possible. So it was treating the text which it was not able to convert as zero. So here, if I'm putting number, sorry for the typo, and I'll add it here. And let's add here number, say for example, 123. And then I'll add here the select magic variable and text. And now we'll clear it out and we'll select this number here. And now we will run and we should get 148. So basically, uh, the reason why I want to show you this is because you need to understand that what kind of data you are getting in that particular variable. Based on that, you are going to perform a particular action. Now, since this shortcut is too small, so it will be easier for you to understand that where you can face an issue. But when you have a huge shortcut, which is very big, uh, performing a complex task, at that point of time, it's it's a bit harder to debug it. And now since this is like a drag and drop situation, you can still feel it a bit easier if you are able to debug. But still, I, I am pretty sure that for complex shortcuts, it's too hard to debug. But when you go to the script table, that is again a purely coding based uh, application where you create, you know, shortcuts or any tasks or even widgets for that matter, based on code. At that point, you need to understand this. So this is, as I have said this in previous videos as well, that this is kind of a foundation to understand how we are going to automate a lot of things in this ecosystem. Now, those who are new and to this video and have not seen the previous two videos, I just suggest you to go back and check the previous videos so that you will get an idea on what I'm trying to explain. Moving on, we are done with the numbers here now. Now let's move to images. And this is my favorite part because with images, you can do a lot of things. So I have already uh, added one of the image uh, from, you know, from somewhere to get some information out of it. So now next, what we are going to do is we are going to work with images. So this is my favorite part because even I was not aware that we can do so much things with images in the shortcut tab. So what we are going to do is for again, uh, we have already discussed about how to get the latest photo from the photo album in shortcut. And we will, we will be using the same action here. So in photos, if you'll go, you'll see here, get latest photo. And you will again have some, uh, you know, extra options like include screenshot. And if you are using other actions in that, you will have more options. And we are going, we also have the number of photos that we can get. Now, if, if you'll play it, you can see here that we have got an image. So now, <clears throat> most of the people, what they'll think is that what all things we can do with the image, like we can edit the image, we can 
send the image maybe we can uh, you know uh, do some cropping and stuff with the image but an image is having a lot of more data then you can imagine if you have clicked it from your phone or maybe it has been shared with the same ecosystem around if there is no any cutting of uh, data from that so in that case you know the image is having its name size length width it's having the location where the image has been captured now there is an action which is so again with images we have a lot of different actions you know set wallpaper we have take photo save to photo album we have find photos we have combine images get details from image this is the ones basically we are going to check now mask image upload to image blur and a lot more things if you have different apps which are used for some images and they are supported by you know shortcut then obviously get that as well now we are going to drag in get details of images now here it will take the image which we are going to fetch by default but the real amazing thing that happens is when you click on details you'll see here these are all the details that you can get from the image now you can understand the level of metadata that an image is holding here so basically this goes around in all the ecosystem even android images are having a lot of information but you can imagine what you can do now you can see the date taken image so if you want to create a shortcut which is sort the images which are only taken on a specific date you can sort the images with that if you want a media type photo or a, you know a video or something like that if you have photo type you have screen is a screenshot is a screen recording is a, so we are basically going to work with the location right now but you can see what exactly this is so if i'll click on location and if i'll play it will literally show you old color where is the where is the location where it was it was taken now if i have to you know uh, expand it will show the address so if we want to open this in the maps so, so so we can just go and we can write maps so in map we can click here and we can just drop it here by default it will take the location when i'll click on play it'll show you where that location is this is this is really amazing and now here what you can do is so again if you go in maps you can see here that you can write open directions you have find places you have you have a lot of things again here get address from input get travel time street address get so basically here you can perform any kind of automated action using these kind of shortcuts so again we can do a lot of things with the images but the major thing that i wanted to show you was this location because i am pretty amazed with this kind of thing now again this we are going to use you know in future shortcuts where we are going to use what all things we can do with this location and and stuff now the final part of this particular video which is nothing no it's literally it is called nothing if you will go and search for nothing you will get nothing now personally i am fan of this action the reason being is that whenever you are working on scripting which we will be doing in the next to next video this nothing comes in handy a lot so if for the programming folks if you have worked with you know loops you might have seen that in any case where we want to pass the action without performing anything we use something called as continue so this is something like that you will play it it does nothing so if you know an exceptional case is there where you do want to perform any action but yet you want to check that condition in that case you use nothing now honestly the you know the whole description or the use as single handedly is not much but coming into a complex shortcut or a scripting part this dude comes really handy
And yep, there are two major, uh, you know, uh, data structure types of data types, which are dictionaries and list, which we are going to see in the next video. The reason being is those two needs a bit more attention and explanation and a lot of examples in it because those two things are going to come a lot useful when we are going to work with the big actual shortcuts like creating actual shortcuts understanding different shortcuts from the gallery and by the time we are at the end i'll be showing you around five to ten of my favorite shortcuts which i think we can use to make our life a bit more easier and we ourselves will be creating some more shortcuts as well so yeah, guys, this is it for today's video. I think uh, the these five major types that is, you know, uh, these three major types that is text, numbers, and images are, and nothing, of course, here are really very important when it comes to the, uh, build, uh, like building different shortcuts. So make sure that you watch the video very carefully, pausing in between to understand, try to create your own smaller shortcuts using these things. Try to explore different uh, different kind of uh, operations that you can do with these data types and see if you can create something awesome. And yep, that's it, guys. So if you create any shortcut, make sure you add it to the gallery. Make sure you share it in our comment section to make sure that we are also aware and if something new will surely showcase, showcase it here in our next video. And also, if you have any doubts or anything, make sure you add it in the comment section. If you like the video, make sure you like it. If you have, if you want to share it with someone, make sure you share it as well. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to check the podcast that I have launched, that I have re released recently with the cybersecurity expert, Samik Roy. It was really an awesome experience and you should surely check it out. I have created a playlist of the podcast. I'll be adding this as well in the playlist. So make sure you check all the podcasts that I have created and we are moving into an exciting journey of podcast. And that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Keep innovating. Take care.